Hello there, this is Professor DeMasi, and I would like to welcome you to the course Immunology. Uh, this is going to serve as an introductory video to the course, as well as to some of the topics covered in Chapter 1. So as you're watching these videos, what you should be doing first is going to the course website, looking for the chapter objectives, which I've typed up for every chapter, print out those objectives, and use them to take your notes from these lectures and from the book so that you know exactly what I expect you to know for this course. So on Blackboard there's a list of objectives for Chapter 1 and we're going to cover some of them in this video. And the other things we're going to cover in this video are themes that are carried out through the entire course of immunology. So I just want to get you familiar and thinking about these themes that we're going to see over and over again. So one of the first themes that we're going to talk about is that the immune system is complicated. Very complicated. Why? Well, it has to do with all the different pathogens that could infect a person, all the different locations that the pathogens could be located in. Um, so the immune system has to do a good job of patrolling, protecting, defending, attacking, communicating um, against all these different types of pathogens. Pathogens that the body has never seen before. So the immune system is complex. Um, but I'm very confident that you'll be able to learn about all the complexities uh, of the immune system. So, um, let's talk about pathogens. Really, you have to talk about uh, infectious agents before you start talking about the immune system. So hopefully you've all taken the, uh, microbiology and you've learned about a number of different pathogens, right? A pathogen is any uh, organism that can cause disease. So when we're exposed to pathogens, they try to reproduce inside us, they try to replicate, and sometimes they damage our body in the process. So I just want to introduce the four classes of pathogens. The, the, first, classes are, the first classes are viruses. There are many different types of viruses, and your book talks about and lists them in Chapter 1, and here's a table of viruses. Um, so the immune system is complex because there are all these different types of viruses that could infect you, and they could be located in lots of different places in the body, and they all look different from one another. Uh, a measles virus is going to look different than a polio virus. It's going to look different than a rhinovirus or a rotavirus. So uh, these pathogens need to be detected and need to be attacked and removed from the body. So um, in uh, these videos during this course, that's how I draw my virus particles. So that's a very generic virus that I'm drawing there. And um, when you think about viruses and their ability to infect, um, think about the fact that they're located sort of all over the body in terms of where they can uh, get inside you and where they could reproduce. So those are viruses, and we're going to see um, lots of different types uh, being uh, attacking the body, and the body need, needing to be uh, attacking them as well. So the second class of pathogens are bacterial in nature. So in microbiology, you probably spend a lot of time learning about different types of bacteria. And again, the immune system has to be very complicated because it has to be able to detect all these different types of bacteria to defend against them. Um, so when I draw bacteria in my lectures, I sort of draw it like that, sort of a circle, uh, more of the rod ones covered in some uh, antigens. And again, um, the immune system needs to be able to recognize all sorts of different um, bacteria. And again, they're going to look different from one another. There might be some similarities, but there are going to be a lot of differences. So the immune system has to be able to uh, detect and defend against viruses, bacteria, um, the last two um, classes of pathogens are fungi and parasites, or worms, large multicellular uh, pathogens. And again, your book lists lots of different pa pathogens in the fungi class or the parasitic uh, worms type class. Um, again, many different types. The body has to be able to detect them and attack them. Uh, we'll probably spend most of the time talking about viruses and the bacteria, how the body detects and defends against those, but we'll also talk about fungi and, and worms as well. So those are the four major classes of pathogens. So the reason the immune system is complicated is because pathogens look different from one another. Uh, something that will detect and defend against a rotavirus is not necessarily going to work against a herpes virus. So the immune system has to be able to 
detect all these different types of pathogens. Um, the other thing that are different between the different pathogens is they might infect different parts of the body. Some infect the skin, some infect um, organs within the body, uh, the lungs, might, some might get into the brain um, or into the blood. So the body needs to be able to detect and defend in various locations around the body. So the immune weapons are different in different parts of the body. So we're going to be hopping all over the body, in tissues, in blood, in lymph, uh, because we need to be able to detect and defend in those locations. Um, we're going to see that pathogens can exist in different places in the body, not just organs and tissues, but at the cellular level, inside a cell or outside a cell. And these two, two terms are going to come up very frequently, intracellular and extracellular. Extracellular means outside the cell, in the interstitial fluid, um, that's the fluid outside the cell. Uh, sometimes we talk about that fluid as um, humors, the fluids of your body, like blood, um, plasma, or lymphatic um, fluid. Um, so we'll see pathogens living outside of your cells in the interstitial fluid. We're also going to see pathogens inside your cells, so in the cytoplasm or in vesicles inside the cells. So the immune system has to be able to detect and defend both of these locations, inside the cell and outside the cell. Again, we're going to use different weapons to do that. Um, the other thing the immune system is going to have to do is going to have to fight back against these pathogens. It's going to have to be able to stop them from reproducing, it's going to have to be able to kill them and remove them from the body, prevent them from continuing their reproductive cycle. So the immune system has got to be complicated because it's got to be able to attack the pathogens as well. And each pathogen, a virus or a bacteria, they might have different weapons that are used against them. So when um, drawing things like viruses and bacteria like I drew here, I might draw some cells, and so these are... Um, some epithelial cells, for example. Maybe this is a single layer of epithelial cells, so simple tissue. And um, you've got to remember that pathogens, like viruses or bacteria, can be present outside the cell, like the ones above, or pathogens can be inside a cell, like you can see the ones I've shown here, that are intracellular. So the immune system has to be able to detect and defend both outside the cell and inside the cell. So, there are going to be three themes that we're going to see over and over throughout this course, and I want you to be able to um, recognize when we're talking about um, one of these three different themes. Um, the first theme is recognition. The immune system has to recognize that a something doesn't belong in the body, recognize it as we say non-self. So there are many, many recognition mechanisms that the body uses to detect something that doesn't belong in the body. So here I've drawn some viruses or bacteria, and in green I drew immune cells. They're not very complicated right now, they're just immune cells. And maybe and draw some immune proteins. And right, We're going to see that the immune system is made of cells and proteins. Um, so we're going to learn about a lot of different types of immune cells, a lot of different types of immune proteins. So I've drawn some immune cells and some immune proteins, antibodies, as so many of you know about already. So the immune system, both cells and proteins, need to be able to recognize that something doesn't belong in the body and recognize it for attack, recognize it for defense. So we're going to talk, call these things non-self. Um, sometimes we'll refer to them as antigenic molecules. And the body has to be able to ignore self molecules. So you don't want this green immune cell to attack this blue normal cell. The body needs to be able to recognize self versus non-self. If there's non-self recognized, then we need to mount an attack and a defense. So there are many recognition molecules in the human body that we're going to learn about throughout this course. Um, and the immune system has to be able to recognize pathogens outside of cell extracellular, as well as inside the cell, intracellular. So we're going to see many recognition mechanisms throughout the course, and I don't want to get into details right now, but they're going to involve proteins on the surface of cells called receptors. We're going to learn about many different types of receptors that can detect a pathogen. Um, we're also going to talk about proteins that detect pathogens as well. So 
throughout the course, in every chapter, we'll talk about recognition. How does the cell or how does this protein recognize a pathogen? Well, that's one theme. The second theme is effector function. So what does that refer to? Effector function means, well, okay, the immune system has recognized something as thus belonging in the body. Now what's it going to do? Right? And effector mechanisms involve cells, immune cells, or immune proteins um, after the recognition event attacking the pathogen to remove it from the body. So immune cells and immune proteins, once they have recognized the pathogen, um, will use the, its effector function to destroy the pathogen, to remove it from the body. So these are called effector functions, and there are many different types of effector functions, again, due to the fact that there are many different types of pathogens, and they can be located in many different locations in the body, extracellular versus intracellular. So when we talk about a pathogen um, being neutralized or being opsonized or being attacked by uh, some sort of complex, that's the effector function. Uh, and there's a figure in your book, especially in Chapter 1, that illustrates this nicely. In the first two panels of this figure, the immune um, system, either immune proteins, shown here as complement, or an immune cell with the receptor, uh, the immune cells or the immune proteins recognize the pathogen. Okay, this bacteria, it doesn't belong in the body. So that's the first part of the immune system being able to recognize a pathogen. The second part, shown in the, the panel on the right, is the effector mechanism, or the effector function. Oh, great, now we recognize this thing doesn't belong, what are we going to do to get rid of it? And that's called the effector mechanism. And we're going to learn about many different types of those as well. The third theme that we're going to see throughout this course is called, um, is, uh, has to do with communication. When the immune system detects or recognizes an infection, it usually sends for help. It usually mounts it other defenses. So immune cells commonly release molecules that are involved in cell-to-cell -cell or cell-to-organ or cell-to-tissue communication. So the immune system talks to other parts of the body. It might talk to cells, it might talk to other tissues, and we're going to learn a lot about communication molecules. Um, so you see here drawn in um, yellow, uh, some molecules that are released from immune cells that might go and talk to other immune cells to tell them uh, to help with the attack. So that's another broad theme that we see throughout this course, uh, communication. And these involve molecules called cytokines, which we'll learn in chapters 2 and 3, um, signaling molecules. Um, so these are the general themes throughout the course. I'm either going to be teaching about how the immune system recognizes the pathogen, how it targets a pathogen for destruction, or how the immune system communicates with another part of the body to help things like one and two. Well, and that is the end of this first video. Um, so I'm going to stop it here, and there'll be another video you can watch after this. By the way, um, since these videos are posted on YouTube, uh, you are able to increase the speed of the video, so you can watch this as one, one and a half times uh, the speed or two times the speed. So if you are um, okay with uh, watching this video sped up, um, you can watch that as well. And now you can go back and rewind and catch anything that you missed. All right, great. That's video one.